Hello, everybody. <clears throat> this meeting will be held in accordance with Executive Order N2920 issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 17, 2020, the Ralph M. Brown Act, California Government Code Section 54950 ET sequence, and the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act. This meeting will be physically open to the public and also available via Zoom. Zoom meeting information is posted on the agenda. This is the official special meeting of the Sirius City Council. I hereby, the Mayor of City of Sirius, call a special City Council meeting to be held today, Monday, 23rd, 2021, commencing at 5 p.m. Here at the City Council Chambers, located at 2701 4th Street, Sirius, California. <clears throat> May we call to order, please. Council Member Rhino. Here. Council Member Silvera. Here. Vice Mayor Condit is absent. Yes. Mayor Lopez. Here. Today, <clears throat> Members of the public may address the City Council on matters listed on this on this closed session agenda. Is there anyone that would like to comment on the two items on the closed session agenda via Zoom and or in person? Seeing none, we will now adjourn to a closed session. Conference with Labor Negotiator and Public Employment. We adjourned.
Okay, the council gave uh, direction to staff on both of the closed session items. Thank you, everybody. This meeting is now adjourned.
Hello, everybody. This meeting will be held in accordance with Executive Order N2920 issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 17th, 2020, the Ralph M. Brown Act, California Government Code Section 549-950 ET Sequence, and the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act. This meeting will be physically open to the public and also accessible via Zoom. Zoom meeting information is on, is on the posted agenda. Remote public comment also available for the city council meeting by emailing the city clerk at cityclerk at ci.series.caus by 5 p.m. the date of the meeting. Include agenda items number on the public comment period in the subject line of the email. The clerk may read written comments into the record if specifically requested to do so at the beginning of your email. Your written comment will be distributed to the city council and kept on file as part of the official record of the council meeting. Welcome everybody to city council chambers today, Monday, August 23rd, 2021. I call this meeting to order. Can I get the roll call please? Council member Rhino. Here. Council member Silvera. Here. Vice mayor candidate is absent and mayor Lopez. Here. We'll begin with the invocation by Pastor Patrick Davis from the Sirius Christian Center. I believe he's on Zoom. <clears throat> Is everyone there? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties over here. God help us all for technical difficulties, but thank you so much for having me this, this evening. Uh, real quick, just be encouraged that in these tough times, uh, you guys, every council member and all of the city are in our prayers over at Sirius Christian, so thank you. Uh, can we pray together? Father, thank you for the council members. Thank you for their role in leading this city. God, would you pour out your blessing upon them and lead them? Give them wisdom as they uh, talk through whatever various issues are in uh, the beautiful community. And I'm praying, God, that you would give us all uh, hope and patience and strength and energy. Uh, we thank you for your presence in our lives and ask your blessing on the meeting tonight. In Jesus' name, we said amen. 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 <clears throat> Today we have a special presentation for Tom Westbrook. Tom Westbrook for the time that I've known you, I, I believe that it's it's been not only a, an educational part, and you stood up and you helped me through the process, but at the same time, with your years of experience, I've seen many people walk into that office, and the relationships that you built really showed me the, what type of a person that you were. And I, I think that um, everybody here is going to miss you. I'm not the only one. I'm sure there's people in here that know you way longer than I have. And I'm sure they're going to have a lot of words to say. Um, and on behalf of the city of Ceres, I have a plaque for you. And, and it reads, in heartfelt appreciation to Tom Westbrook for your years of dedication and commitment as city manager, April 2020, August 2021, director of community development, November 2012, April 2020, planning and building manager, July 2010, November 2012, senior planner, July 2004, July 2010, Associate Planner, January 2001, July 2004, presented this 30, 23rd date of August, 2021, the City of Ceres. Tom, I present this plaque to you. We do have several <clears throat> presenters today, one of them being uh, Lisa Montero Moore, and on behalf of Assembly Member, Assembly Member Adam Gray, I'm not sure if she's here. Yes, she is. Please step up. I wouldn't miss this meeting for the world. I'm here representing Assembly Member Adam Gray. Thank you, Tom, for your service to the city of Ceres, the residents, for the extended amount of years. So I have recognition from the Assembly Member, but I'm also taking advantage of the fact I have the microphone. And on behalf of the Ceres Street Fair Committee, thank you 
for your continued efforts. You're helping us clean up, set up, and all the many questions that come in between for the many, many years you've served our town. And as having been the vice mayor of this community, the time that you put in as a staff person when I was learning what to do and to watch you become our city manager speaks volumes for your, your um, integrity, your community, dedication, and the person you are. So you will always have a bright future and you always have a spot in series. So thank you, Tom. Thank you, Lisa. Next, on behalf of Supervisor Chance Condit, we have Russ. He was here. Where is he? Russell Powers. Oh, there you are, sir. Chance Condit's office. Uh, sorry about that. Russell Fowler, Supervisor Chance Condit's office. Supervisor apologizes he can't be here tonight as a previous commitment, but uh, just wanted to present you with this resolution honoring your years of great work. And uh, on behalf of the supervisor, congratulations. Thank you, Russ. I believe we have a, a representative from the Series Chamber of Commerce here today. Good afternoon, Renee. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Uh, we just really want to thank Tom for all the time he committed to the series chamber. He was there for all of our events. He was there just like for the street fair. He was there from the beginning to the end. Uh, we really want to thank his wife, Jackie, for sharing him with not only the city of series, but with the series business community. So we have a plaque for him that says, Tom, thank you for your generous commitment of time, support, and dedication. Best always, Jerry's Chamber. I am personally going to miss you. Before I ask anybody else in the audience, um, Assembly, uh, Excuse me, Senator uh, from the 12th District, Anna Caballero, sent this down to the office today. Tom Westbrook, dedicated public service, City of Ceres, in appreciation of 20 years of dedication public service to the City of Ceres. You serve as an associate planner, director of the community development, and city manager is deeply appreciated. Thank you for your contributions to our community and best wishes for the future. Now, I would ask if there's anybody in the public that would like to make a comment before my city council does. Mr. Westbrook, Mike Klein, I would like to turn around and thank you very much. For the four years that I spent on the Planning Commission, you were enlightening me on the community and its development and what it takes to uh, make a city run. From there, I was on the city council for nine years. As you became the city manager, I really do appreciate your personality, your tenacity, uh, the way you address things. Uh, you're always looking for a way to solve a problem instead of being a part of the problem. Uh, you have done a fantastic job. I can't uh, say enough about you and speak highly enough about what you, what you mean to me for the 13 years that I've got to spend with you on the, at the city. I wish you all the luck, you and your family. Um, and it means a lot to me. One thing that uh, I look at the council agenda tonight, and you know, one of the things that uh, I pushed at one of the last budget meetings that I participate in was somebody to replace you and take a burden off your plate as far as community development director. And I see that uh, tonight that's coming, that's coming true. So I wish you all the luck and thank you very much for your dedication to the city of Ceres. Council, uh, city servants, city residents, 
Uh, my name is Harinder Tor. I own Indigit S Tor Construction. Uh, my career was started with uh, Tom way back about 21 years ago when I first bought a lot and came to you and said, hey, Tom, what can I do with this? You helped me guide me through. And uh, with that accessibility, I made a career out of it, uh, building in series. And um, your uh, vital information has been synonymous with my growth in series. So I appreciate everything you've done. Then after you became a city manager, uh, if I, were, I couldn't navigate through the city channels, I would just ring your cell phone. Hey, Tom, I need this. Can you do it? It would be done. For that, I'm grateful. And uh, it's a very sad day to lose someone that's a truly an asset to the city of Ceres. So that's why I'm here to, uh, to show my support. Wherever you go, many blessings to you and your family, and I hope you're happy. And if all else fails, please come back. Thank you, Tom. Tom Westbrook, you're a traitor. <laughs> I thought you were at least going to get out of the state, but that's okay. I want to thank you for all the times that you've helped all these people in series. I know personally that you've helped me tremendously. I've called you at times when things were kind of tough. And you were there, along with some other people in the city. And when you... You just got this rapport with people. I've never heard you angry. I, uh, I've heard you raise your voice a little bit, but you've never reached out and tried to, you know, verbally attack anybody or anything. You've always been quite professional. And I think that's something that, that uh, every city should have. And I think the people here and myself, as years go by when we think of Siri, we'll think of Tom Westbrook. Thank you. Wanted to make sure if there was anybody on Zoom that would like to speak. Anybody with their raise their hands raised? Okay. And uh, City Council, any words? You see a hand? Oh, there. I see a Lee. Lee Brandt, Mr. Brandt, I'll unmute your mic. Your mic is unmuted. Yeah, I would just like to say, Tom. Sheila and I have known you for many, many years, and you are one level-headed man. I've never seen you get upset. I know that you can do wonderful job up in Red Bluff, and I don't. I just, I, just, I'm at a loss for words. I mean, you know, I mean, I know series is is losing a good man. Uh, but Red Bluff is gaining a good man. Uh, Tom, take care. The best to you and your family. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any more hands? Thank you. Is there? Honey Vasquez, Miss Vasquez, I'll unmute your mic. Connie Vasquez. Your mic is unmuted. Thank you. I just wanted to say, even though I haven't known Tom very long, um, he's always been very sweet, very kind, and he's even made a point to come up to me and say hello to me. And that takes a lot out of, um, takes a lot of a person to just walk up to someone you don't know and say hi. And I just really appreciate knowing you, even though it was a short time, Tom, and I do wish you all the best. Thank you. No more hands? Council? Almost 21 years ago, and Tom probably knows where this story is gonna go, I was working in the planning department and the planning director at the time was interviewing three people for an associate planner position. So um, he was getting ready to interview them. Denise, who happens to be in the audience, was at one end of the counter. I was at the other end of the 
counter. And we decided that we were going to do our own um, interview, kind of a pre-interview, because well, we just didn't have a lot of faith, I think, in the director at the time. So each time one of the applicants came in, she and I would kind of volley questions back and forth to each other and try to engage these three different candidates. And one of them was this tall, youngish, young man who was wearing ill-fitting shoes because he forgot his in Yuma and had to borrow somebody's much smaller shoes. So we talked and, and when it was all over, we Denise and I were going to rate them. I rated Tom number one. If I remember right, Denise rated him number two. Um, and I have to say that over the 20 plus years that he's been that I felt I definitely was right on when I rate, rated him number one. He still continues to be number one. When he moved to Ceres from Yuma, he actually moved into Ceres. And then when he and Jackie got married, they bought a house. And being a good husband, he split the difference between her job and his job, and he moved to Kurloff. And even when he moved to Kurloff, he still continued to be part of our community. It wasn't just a job to him. He didn't work eight to five. He immersed himself in our community. Abby came along. He still was coming to community events. Stephen came along. He was still coming to community events, which I think speaks a lot for the man. He didn't just look at it as a job. He's been very devoted to not only our organization, but our community. I will miss him. I like bantering with him, and he knows when I ask my questions, it's just who I am, and he usually has a good answer for me. He probably is the only city manager who has come down on a Saturday and helped me pull weeds. I, I just, we've never had another city manager do that. I wish Jackie, Abby, and Stephen the best of luck. I think Red Bluff, California is very fortunate to have you. And that's kind of a joke with me and I. It's not Red Bluff. It's Red Bluff, California. And the one last thing I want to say is now you better get those kids their dog. Thanks, Tom. Why are you smiling, Tom? I'm not going to tell them the truth. Uh, about 20 months ago, I got involved with the city on the planning commission. <clears throat> Something I'd been thinking about doing for a long time. And literally without Tom's leadership and coaching, I probably would have made more of a mess of it than I probably have. Um, it's been huge and instrumental in my life to be able to learn <clears throat> city business from somebody like Tom. Literally 20 months of growth where I feel like I'm a lot more confident in uh, city business and what it takes to, to run our city at the highest level and provide the most service for our citizens. Um, he led us through and continued to be in some unprecedented times, unprecedented times with COVID and all the junk that that's uh, been thrown at us. And he's never wavered one bit. It's always been there, a great leader through these times. And also in his previous roles and as the city manager, we're at a preface of development in series like we've never had in our history. And that a lot of that is because of the relationships that Tom's built with developers and everybody else involved with the process. So we're in a great place because of Tom Westbrook. I hope the city, the citizens of series realize that and uh, wish him nothing but the best in Red Bluff. And uh, we'll have to go play some golf when I come that way. Thanks, Tom. Any of our staff would like to say something? I'll make this quick because I've said a lot to you already, Tom, but um, publicly it's been an honor and a pleasure to work with you and to work for you. Probably one of the easiest bosses I've ever had, man of integrity, a problem solver, 
Um, we've had some conversations and behind closed doors where you were allowed to vent, but I've never seen you angry, very professional, solution oriented. And this city's really gonna miss you. I wish you and your family the best of luck and Red Bluff is getting a hell of a boss. Thank you, Chief. With that, Tom, would you like to say something? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you to everyone who's attended this evening uh, and given me your well wishes. Uh, most likely, Mayor Lopez, I'll probably save my comments for the end uh, because I don't want my mascara to run. Okay. <laughs> Okay with but, that, so I'm okay with yeah, that, Tom. But thank you for everybody that's that's come here this evening. I do really appreciate it, um, but I'll save some comments for the end. Okay, sounds good to me. Okay, that concludes the presentation, everyone. Thank you so much. <clears throat> We're going to move on to citizens' communications. To the council on matters not included on the agenda, you are only allowed five minutes. While the city council welcomes and encourages participation in the city council meetings, the adopted rules allow no more than five minutes. Resolution number 2007-106, for the expression of the non-agenda items, matters on the jurisdiction of the city council and not posted on the agenda. May be addressed by the general public. However, California law prohibits the city council from taking any action on any matter which is not posted on the agenda. Unless it is determined to be an emergency by the city council. Citizens are entitled to address the city council on any agenda item subject to the five minute provision. We're gonna go ahead and take uh, any comments on Zoom first. We have one hand raised, John Osgood. Mr. Osgood, I'll get your mic. Welcome, Mr. Osgood. Good evening. How's everybody tonight? Good, I hope. Um, just had one uh, one concern this week. The last meeting, uh, you know, I was told I'd had my time to speak. We cannot continue conversations and keep bringing up different topics and tell the people that they have already utilized their time and don't have the time to speak. If the people are done talking after the council's deliberated, then all city staff and the council need to be done as well and make a decision. We cannot continue the conversation and leave the people out. I'd just like for you guys to consider that uh, moving forward so that everyone can participate equally. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Osgood. More hands. Oh, that's not working good with this man. No hands. If there's nobody else on Zoom, we'll go ahead and continue with the public comments. Are we on Zoom? You're good to go. Uniquely serious. That old saying about beating a dead horse in the head. Sometimes that's what we get there, don't we? Uh, here I am back on the noise issue. Uh, in the city, not just where I live. And I it came before you before and gave you the numbers to uh, uh, my area and the rest of the series that uh, the city from 2009 for that 2019 to 2020, there was over 19, I think it was close to 19, 1,990 uh, calls on noise disturbances and that comes out to about 86 a month so uh, and i've discussed this with linda rhino a few times in previous city council and uh, it's still an issue just this weekend within probably 15 minute walk of my house there was three live bands playing till i think one stopped about 11 one stopped about 12 and one a little bit in between 10 and 11 but they're broadcasting it's a uh, amplified music and uh, uh, I brought this up in the past not too long ago and uh, the issue was I thought that we could uh, uh, take the noise ordinance the whole noise ordinance for the city a series and when an officer goes out to a house whether it's somebody cutting tile like they've done next to my house or just any noise disturbance at all and the people just seem to be repetitive on these things. They don't care about law enforcement, what goes on. They just do what they feel. So I took today to let you know that 
the, the noise ordinance can be put on one page, which uh, I believe Diane gave each of you that. And uh, uh, I had it done in color, so the yellow would show up. And I believe that that yellow would, would be appropriate for what's uh, to be uh, uh, getting the attention of the offenders or violators or whatever you want to call it. But we're not getting across to some of these people. You know, those numbers seem small uh, for two years, but that's quite a bit in one month. You know, over 80 calls just for noise disturbances. And those possibly, and I didn't get the chief to check those out, a lot of those are possibly on weekends, Fridays and Saturdays, sometimes Sundays. They've been on, people have been doing that stuff on holidays, Christmas time, you know. Christmas Eve, they're playing this, this amplified music in the neighborhood. It's just ridiculous. And uh, I just want to let you know that it can be done. And I'd like to get, you know, some feedback. You can get to, to Linda Rhino or, uh, you know, and then she can get back to me to see what, if we can come to some kind of solution for law enforcement to carry these in their the briefcase or whatever they care with them. They can have English and Spanish both. And uh, those underlying things are, are pretty important. And uh, there's a discrepancy in the uh, noise ordinance when you go down to unnecessary noises under chapter 4904.020 and you go down to section B where it explains about uh, the, the noise with uh, amplified music and stuff. And then when you go to the uh, uh, city or uh, code enforcement, and I sent Linda this before, it says complaints. And if you read that, it just goes against what the ordinance is saying. It's just ridiculous. And I don't know why this was put on there. Uh, John Warren saw this one night and the next day he called me and said, hey, can you believe what, what this says? And you compare the two, something's wrong here. And either that needs to be deleted or you delete the whole section B on uh, uh, the unnecessary noises in the, the city code. All right, thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Rhino. Mr. Westbrook, what he was speaking to about under the planning or under the police department, I believe you've had that taken care of. Yes, I believe that the, um, the code enforcement office fixed that um, when it was brought to our attention. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a, a David Garcia. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Mayor, council members, my name is Dave Garcia, and I'm the attorney for the Series Police Officer Association. I'm here this evening because we are about to enter into negotiations for a successor MOU, Memorandum of Understanding. Um, and I'm here tonight to ask you to consider, along with the other members uh, attendance, utilizing a new approach called interest-based negotiations, IBN. Uh, two methods that we always use are traditional or positional bargaining. IBN is another option. And positional bargaining, each side for adversaries. Each side sits across the table from each other. We slide proposals across. There are some concessions and agreements. But ultimately, it leads to a loggerhead a bevy of issues where each side is not willing to give, and that is typically where negotiations break down. So again, I'm offering IBN as an option. Uh, why is that an attractive option? It forces each side to work together. With IBN on day one, there is a facilitator, a third party. That's important because that person uh, forces each side to work together happens is that each side gets together, identifies issues or concerns they want addressed in the upcoming contract. There are large, we call them post-it notes about the size of that window that are taped up along the wall as each issue is developed, concerns are addressed, and we list those typically in numeric fashion. It helps though because each side begins to identify those concerns and how to address them. Work as a group collectively and a partnership how can we get to a common goal, goal of a contract uh, in lieu of having adversaries saying, hey, we're not going to give you that. We're not going to give you this. Each side works together, like I said, 
uh, and maybe four, five days in, a common proposal is put forward to settle those issues that you see lined up on the large post-it notes on the wall. They're clearly identifiable, easily read. Uh, each side always knows what was raised two or three meetings prior. Unlike positional or traditional bargaining where there are a scribe maybe, but there aren't notes that are formal or a stenographer or a reporter, IBN keeps those issues alive. And again, the common goal theme contract. Having that facilitator there is huge. That person helps out to say, hey, let's stay on task. Don't forget, POA, you guys raised ABC. You're now bound by that. The city has a good point here. It's a way that neither side kind of gets a benefit, but is forced to really reckon with what they've raised or maybe have earlier said during the, uh, the process. You know, I've heard some concerns in the past. I've done this about three times in my career. Each time I have reached a successful uh, new MOU. Uh, it's about six meetings. It does not take a year, does not take eight months, uh, typically about two and a half, maybe three months. Uh, that is the beauty of it. Uh, once you get on the roll, that facilitator keeps each side moving. So again, as an alternative to the positional or traditional bargaining, I ask that you guys consider this. There is a cost. But in the end, at larger cities, uh, POAs on one side, deeply entrenched on several issues, city unwilling to give, or maybe they can't give. For, but having that third party there, who finds common ground, and that's important. So again, a lot of the history we had last year, coming into this new MOU that we're trying to uh, over soon negotiate, uh, the hardworking women of CPOA, Ask that you do consider using IBN or interest-based negotiation. Any questions I can take them before I sit down? Any questions, Council? Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Thank Appreciate you. <clears throat> Is there anybody else in the public that would like to speak? Do we receive any emails? Okay, the uh, public comment period is now closed. <clears throat> Moving on. Is there anyone on the council that would like to declare a conflict of interest? No, moving on. Consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered routine in nature and will be enacted by a single motion unless otherwise requested by an individual council member or public for special consideration. Otherwise, the recommendation staff will be accepted and acted upon a roll call vote. Is there anyone on the council that would like to a consent item pulled? Yes, um, not necessarily pulled, but I would like to ask if we could continue item 11 to our next meeting. Member Severa, okay with that? Can we push that along to the next meeting, sir? Just have a separate motion to continue that item. Okay, I'll second that. Oh. What would you like to make the motion first? I'd like to move to continue resolution number 202190 to the next city council meeting. Second. We get a roll call. Council Member Rhino? Yes. Council Member Silvera? No. And Mayor Lewis. Yes. Passes two one. Is there anybody from the public that would like an item pulled? Just for record, the motion failed. Yes. So then I would like I eleven pulled. Yes, ma'am. Move to approve consent calendar one through 10 and number 12. Second. Roll call. Yes. 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 Okay. <clears throat> 
Resolution number 2021-90, approving an agreement with Big Valley Grace Community Church Incorporated and authorizing the city manager to execute the agreement. Westbrook, um, when the city built the community center, what funds did we use? Did we use redevelopment or was that used to purchase the church or grounds or what did, what, what monies did we use? Um, bond proceeds were used to develop the, um, the community center. And the bond proceeds are supposed to be spent for the community, something that affects the community? Yes, to enhance community, um, to enhance the community. Okay. With that, um, I haven't had a problem with the church in our facilities because typically we weren't renting it on Sunday. Um, and then they did the Monday morning Bible study, but now they want to increase the usage to Wednesday, and that would be the large assembly hall and a number of our classrooms? Um, primarily the large assembly, but they have the ability to rent uh, rooms if they are available, just like any other member of the public. Um, even though they would have Wednesday use, there would still be classes within the community center that have already been scheduled. Okay, but my concern is, is that we're limiting ability of community members to rent our community center. And even if currently you say that no one is using it, we're still limiting the ability if we rented it to the church. So um, historically, the heavy days for the community center, most community centers, it's Friday and Saturday evenings, sometimes on Thursdays. Um, uh, using a Wednesday night isn't uh, a lot of demand. Um, we have had uh, an outfit in the community center that actually rented this room um, on a fairly consistent basis on Wednesday evenings at well. Um, there wouldn't be any conflict with the church and those two organizations having a rental on the same evening. Uh, but the, the additional of the Wednesday evening um, is additional revenue to the city, um, especially on a night where we don't necessarily have the large assembly rented. Um, so there'd be additional revenue uh, to the community center. Okay, and then one of the changes to the new contract is instead of the church or their internet in the office, that it would be our responsibility. I thought that the internet rate stayed exactly the same. Um, what, what I'm looking at from the information sent me earlier today, it said, the new contract says, licensor will provide one annual pass each year to allow staff to connect to the Wi-Fi other than on Sundays. The previous one said, licensee will coordinate with the licensor staff set up internet and phone connection. Licensee will be responsible for all set up and monthly charges. I think that the thought process here is we've increased our capacity for Wi-Fi and we're just giving them one annual pass. So not every member of the church would be able to utilize that, but the church staff would be able to utilize it when they were in the office. And instead of them providing for their own internet. Correct. And and it wouldn't be any different than if uh, there was a business meeting in here, we hand out the Wi-Fi passes for people that attend the business meetings as well at no cost. All right, thank you. Any members of the public have a comment? Anybody on Zoom? Move to approve number 11 on the consent calendar. Second. You get a roll call. Council member Rhino? No. Council member Silvera? Yes. And Mayor Lopez? Yes. Two, one. Okay, moving on to new business. 
clarification, it failed. At this point, City Attorney Allen and um, with the with it failing, uh, can they bring the item back? Or at this point in time, should the council consider a continuation of this item? Get another member on the council for consideration. We're not under Robert's rules. We're under Rosenberg's rules. So you could go back if you wanted to and make a motion to continue it. For the next meeting or another meeting but uh, ordinances resolutions and expenditure of money require three votes right exactly and, and so from staff's perspective um, this agreement has been in place for a couple of years and big valley grace has been a great partner in in that and so um you know, I would make a recommendation if 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 the council um, desires is to continue the item uh, to a future meeting so that there could be go to the council. Once again, I will make a motion to have this item consider considered at the next council meeting. Okay. Second. The roll call. Actually, we need one of the other two members to make that motion. It's oh. in effect a motion for reconsideration. Well, then well, I'll make that motion. Okay, I'll make a motion to continue item number 11 to the next city council meeting. I can get a second, please. Can I second it? Second. Roll call, please. Council member. Yes. Council member Silvera. In lieu of them not being able to use it. Yes. And Vice Mayor Con. I mean, sorry, Vice Mayor. And Mayor Lopez. Aye. Three zero. Passes. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to new business. Resolution number 2021-92, ratifying the appointment of Alex Tar Taraza, already messing up his last name, to the position of interim city manager. Westbrook Hallen, is there a uh, staff report for this? Sure, I'll take one. Uh, Thank you. So this evening, um, I end my career with the city of Ceres, and we need to uh, hand the reins over to an individual that's qualified to lead the city um, while permanent search for city manager replacement um, uh, happens. Um, Alex Terezas um, has more than 25 years of local government experience with many of that, um, those years of experience at kind of the executive um, level management. Um, town of Truckee, um, Alex spent 15 years, uh, most recently uh, nearly five years with the city of Los Banos as their city manager. Um, so staff has prepared a contract for the council's consideration um, to bring aboard Alex. Um, if the council approves the action, this evening, then Alex would start employment with the City of Ceres uh, tomorrow um, and kind of uh, take over the reins uh, from me and kind of lead the city during that interim phase moving into the future. And with that, I would be available to answer any questions the council may have. You can go ahead and begin with the council. Council Member Sue. I was prepared to vote against this, even though Mr. Tarazas may be qualified. I was, I, I thought one of the other candidates that we interviewed was better suited for our organization. But seeing that there are only three of us, and we don't have, we would not have a city manager. So the Vice Mayor not being tonight's meeting, I will have to change. Thank you, Council Member. <clears throat> Is there any members of the public that would like to speak? Anyone on Zoom? Yeah. Council Member? Move to approve Resolution 2021-92. Second. 
Roll call, please. Council Member Reiner. Yes. Council Member Rivera. Yes. And Mayor Lewis. Aye. It passes three zero. Thank you very much. Is there any council referrals? Being none. <clears throat> Moving on to reports. Just want to let the, uh, the public know that we'll be having a small reception in the large assembly today, right after the meeting in, in honor of Tom Westbrook. City Council, do you have any reports? Thank you. City Manager. Yeah, let's go to the other department heads that may have a report oh, first. Correct. Mayor Lopez, thank be, you. We wanted to be less. Yes, that's correct. City Attorney. Any of the other department heads? Russ, you still here? County Supervisor, I guess he left. All right, go ahead, Mr. Westbrook. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lopez. Uh, as Councilperson Rhino indicated, um, I met her uh, first uh, in January of 2001, um, and Denise Schieffer, who's in the audience this evening. Uh, that was a long time ago. Um, she's absolutely correct. I did forget my shoes uh, back in Yuma, Arizona. Uh, fortunately, uh, one of my buddies that I was staying with had a pair of dress shoes that would fit me or that wouldn't necessarily fit me, but had a pair of dress shoes that I could wear. Um, I wear a size 13, they were a size 10. So it was one of the most uncomfortable interviews uh, that I'd ever participated in. My, my toes were a little bit cramped. So, um, you know, spending two decades of a career, I'm very proud um, to say that I've, I've spent 20 years in one place. Um, starting at the bottom and then um, slowly working my way up uh, with with hard work along the way. And so um, I appreciate all the folks that have turned out this evening and, and the well wishes. Um, do you want to thank a couple of folks uh, before I um, <clears throat> conclude my probably 400th city council meeting? Um, and the first one I need to thank is my wife. Um, <clears throat> so we've been together uh, almost 18 years. 18 years into this month, August 29, 2003, I should have ran, but I didn't. And, and she captured me. So um, uh, we've been married almost 15 years and, and she's been extremely supportive of me, me and my advancement and my career. And, and every time I got a promotion, I would tell her, hey, sweetheart, this means more meetings and this means more things that I have to attend. Um, never once in the 18 years that we were together did she um, make me feel like I couldn't do what I thought I needed to do. And so if that was picking weeds with Councilperson Rhino um, on the weekends or doing some other event, um, whether it's setting up for the margarita booth for the Chamber of Commerce or attending the barbecue event, um, never once did she say no. And Jackie, I love you for that. Thank you very much. Um, the council, I have to thank the Syria City Council. <clears throat> they took a shot on a guy that um, has male pattern baldness um, probably as a result of uh, his job. Um, I'm just not giving it up yet, going like Chief Collins or Councilman Severe or Mayor Lopez. Um, and so I, I think the Syria City Council, a council person Rhino and Mr. Klein and DeRosset and uh, Chance Condit, in addition to Mayor Vieira, um, they gave me the reins and I tried to do my absolute best to lead the ship. Um, COVID pandemic wasn't necessarily the funnest time to take over the reins and begin your new uh, career as a uh, series city manager. Um, but I gave it my all and I put all the chips on the table and I, I did my best and I'm proud of that. Um, and I hope that I've left this city in a little bit better place. And I think that um, it's series time to thrive. I think that, that there's going to be great things on the horizon. I have to thank my department heads. <clears throat> um, they're the ones that give me all the support. You know, I get to sit in this chair and help Diane run the Zoom meeting, um, but it's the department head to do a lot of the work around here. Um, and I appreciate all the efforts and support they've given me in addition to the executive staff. Um, Diane, uh, everybody knows the city clerk keeps the city manager in line and Diane has done absolutely that. Every time I was running a foul, running aground, um, she said, you may want to reconsider that. Um, <clears throat> and she would bring me back to center. So Diane, thank you very much. Um, one department head I want to give a little bit of, of a shout out to. Um, there were times that I doubted myself and there was times that 
um, I didn't know if, if, if I was good enough to lead this great city and its employees. Uh, and I wanted to give the best to the residents. And I have to thank Chief Collins because of all of the department heads, he was the one there. He would just listen to me, um, not necessarily looking for a response, but he would let me kind of at least share my thoughts. And I thank you very much, Chief Collins, for that. Uh, the employees, um, as you may suspect, uh, working here as a 20-year employee, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of employees. Um, some have retired before I, uh, some have left for other opportunities. But at the end of the day, I work with a ton of people. I'm going to miss those folks. There are people here that I've worked with from day one. Um, they're very good people and great employees, and they do their best for this city. There's a lot of awesome community members here. Um, you know, some of the service clubs, right? If you've never been to a Seropimus hoedown, you don't know what you're missing. Um, you know, a Lions Club crab feed, a Rotary crab feed, um, a chamber event, uh, concerts in the park, the Siri Street Fair. I mean, there's just a number of awesome people that really love this community and they want to see it thrive. I hope that everybody as we emerge from COVID um, would have that same zeal to make this city the best place that it can be. Um, and I'm glad to say that I was a part of that. Um, 20 years is a long time. Um, this decision, uh, as many of the council members know and some of the folks in the audience, um, I get to go to my hometown and I get to take the same passion um, for my job that I have here and I get to put it into that hometown. And I get to be near my mom and my, grand uh, my kids get to be near their grandma. That's pretty cool for me. Um, I'm going to certainly miss my time in series. I gave my best and I gave my all, and I'm proud of that. <clears throat> and the last thing that I just want to say is simply thank you, series. You got it. You have any extra Kleenex? <clears throat> this will be the last meeting with you, man. Wish you the best of luck. Because now adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>